Okay, hello and welcome back to my live stream. And we are taking a break from Arcade Spirits because a game that I backed on Kickstarter a couple of years ago has finally been released. This is Camp Salute or Pilot or I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, basically, I was looking through itch for games that featured lesbian romances or um, definitely allowed you to romance um, women because so many games the most love interests are men and I was like I want a game where there's plenty of female love interests to choose from and not just a token female love interest or a non-binary love interest and I found this and it was and it happened to the Kickstarter campaign happened to be going at the time so I was like oh yes I'm backing this so it was finally released today, or um, on June 15th, if you're watching this on YouTube. I will include a link to buy it on Itch or Steam. Um, so, you don't get to say in what your character looks like, but you can uh, customize your character's um, name. Um, within reason. Okay. I know this is the correct mouse for this. Oh, don't. Hang on, I think my mouse um, batteries are dead. What is time to find? Oh, one. Okay, I will be right back. Technology. Let's see if changing the battery does the trick. There we go. Yep, it was a dead battery. Oh my gosh, that looks horrible. We found out that it, did, it didn't die in the middle of the street. Middle of thing. Okay, here we go. Camp Salute. A week long summer camps for teenage girls with a long list of typical summer activities. But the brochure failed to mention something. Camp is home to a dangerous secret. Nothing could have prepared me for what I witnessed. Even looking back, I'm not sure I, I would have done anything differently. Day one. When I was eight years old, attending summer camp for the first time would have been exciting. With my 18th birthday only a few months away, it mostly feels embarrassing. I have actually never attended a summer camp because the school I attended was year-round, basically. Uh, especially with um, four kids in school, two of each on different tracks. Summer vacation wasn't really a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Camp is nestled high in the mountains with a special bus being the only way to get there. My parents took so long fussing over me and saying goodbye that I'm already running late. 
Luckily, I'm able to board the final bus of the day. When it pulls into the campgrounds, I get my first glimpse of Camp Pollute. That's pretty. Ooh, you must be Jessica. Okay, so your name is Jessica, so you can either go by Jess or pick a new name entirely. Yeah, I have a name in mind. Nikki. What should people call me at camp? Nikki. Oh, hit enter. Nikki. I'm so happy to see you made it. Unfortunately, you missed the opening ceremony, but your ribbon mates are unpacking now. You should go introduce yourself. And, by the way, I did play the demo for this, because people are like, hey, this is familiar. Yes, I did play the demo for this, but I am starting a completely new playthrough. Um, sure. You're in the third cabin on the left. You meet your cabin mate. And there's a bonfire later tonight for everyone to say hello. I hope we'll see you there. The third cabin on the left, huh? Even though my name is on the door, I feel the need to knock anyway. The girl with blue hair answers. I'm guessing you're Nikki? You must be our final cabin mate. I'm Amy, come on in. Wow. Okay, I can see myself liking Kim. Hello, it's nice to meet you all. I'm Nat. Cassie. It's nice to meet you, too. I lay myself in the only open bed and begin to unpack my things. Bunk beds! We had a bunk bed when I was little. Um, still the pieces, actually, though. We have a, it's kind of unstable. I heard there's a bonfire tonight. Are any of you planning on going? Absolutely. I need to scope out all the lovely ladies here. You should definitely come. It's always super fun. You've been here before? This is my third year. My first summer at Camp Pollute got me interested in finding Bigfoot. Bigfoot? Yes, I'm completely confident that Bigfoot lives somewhere in this area. You can't be serious. Of course I'm serious. Aren't you interested in discovering the truth? If Bigfoot existed, we would have found reliable evidence of them by now. You can't say that for sure. So, Nat is here for Bigfoot and Amy is here for girls. Cute girls. And Amy is here for cute girls. Why did you come to camp, Cassie? I'm interested in photography. I'm from a big city, so I never really got a chance to take photos out in nature. Yeah, I didn't really understand what nature was until I went up into the mountains near I was like, oh, that's nature. Then you should absolutely team up with me. Just imagine how exciting it would be to have photographic evidence of Bigfoot. That can only happen if they actually exist. It's my first time here as well. You already called me out on being here for girls. But how about you? I've never been to camp before. My parents signed me up. But I guess I'm most excited to see the stars. Not tonight, unfortunately. It's going to be cloudy. But don't worry, I'm sure that you'll get a chance to see them this week. None of you snore, right? Why do you ask? Anyone who wakes me up gets whacked with a pillow. Her expression catches me off guard and I laugh out loud. I'm serious. Eventually, everyone else is laughing with me. I think I might be able to enjoy camp after all. By the time I finished unpacking, the sun has already set. Nat, Amy, and Cassie left before I was done. So I go to the bonfire on my own. I can see my three cabin mates chatting with other campers around the fire. I should join one of them. So, talk to Amy, Nat, Cassie. Mm. Well, I like blue hair. Well, blue in general is my favorite color. Um, and I... I kind of like Amy's fresh attitude. Let's talk to Amy. Which one do you need beside the bonfire? 
She's in the middle of a conversation with a girl I haven't met yet. I've never been to camp before. I'm much more interested in indoor activities. Like what? Like sewing. I'm trying to make my own clothes someday. I wish I could do something like that. Can't even put a button back on my jacket. Neither can I. Camp isn't a great place for button sewing. How'd you end up here? My parents. That's basically why I'm here too. But I might as well try to enjoy it while I'm here. Yep. Make the best of it. I've heard the camp has archery. I'm excited to give it a try. Me too. Not to brag, but I'm a bit of a soccer prodigy. I prefer track, but I played soccer as a kid. We'll have to compete sometime. Maybe in archery? Absolutely. You too, Nikki. You too, Nikki Fatima. Sure. I need to try everything Camp Salute has to offer. I could try archery. It's a rather elegant pastime. I feel like the Huntress Diana. Yes, yeah, another history geek. Well, that would probably be fall under mythology. There's enough people here. I bet we could get a role-playing session going sometime. Don't you need fancy dice for that? Don't worry. I brought enough for everyone. Yeah, the Dungeons and Dragons are, well, not sorry, Dungeons and Dragons. He will come RBG. There are other campers around the bonfire. Should I talk to someone else? Yeah, let's go talk to, let's get to know everyone. Uh, let's move on down the line. Talk to Nat. I joined Nat beside the bonfire. They are deep in a conversation with someone. It's so great to see you again, Nat. I wasn't sure you'd be back. I'll keep coming every summer. I'm still looking for Bigfoot, you know. No luck yet, huh? It's only a matter of time. So you've been at this a while, huh? Lots of people search for Bigfoot their entire lives. I'm just continuing the legacy. Hopefully you won't have to search that long. How was your school year? Anything new? I got a pet hedgehog. I named him Gregory. I didn't know you could have a hedgehog as a pet. Um, that, I've seen videos of people with hedgehogs as pets. He's absolutely adorable. Of course he is. I have lots of pictures back at my cabin. I'll definitely have to come see them sometime. Oh, Bianca. You're back again as well. I almost didn't see you. You could say I'm not particularly thrilled to be here. Camping isn't your style? Not really. It's been three years. You'll have to start hiking eventually. Maybe someday. I think I'd rather stay in my cabin and read. You can't spend your whole life in your cabin. No, but I can spend a whole week. I suppose that's true. If you ever change your mind, you're always welcome to join us. There are other campers around the bonfire. Should I talk to someone else? Yep, let's go talk to Cassie. I joined Cassie beside the bonfire. She is talking to a girl in an aquarium t-shirt. I'm excited to go swimming in the lake. If I'm lucky, there might be some tide pools. I'm not sure if it's the right climate for that. But I'm sure swimming will be great. Yeah, tide pools are really only on the coast. Not up in the mountains. I love to swim. I swim all the time back home. We'll see you at the lake sometime? Of course. I wonder if there are any cute fish in the lake. Fish are definitely not cute. I'm sure I can find one. I believe it when I see it. I plan on taking my camera out this week. So if you find a cute fish, I'll take a picture. Oh, look at all of you. I'm so excited to give you young ladies a wonderful camp experience. Nat, is that you? I'm so happy you returned. And Twyla as well. It's good to see you again too. Have any fun activities for us this week? Of course we do. Even better than last year. I can't wait. I'm just happy to spend time with new friends. That's the spirit. We spend our evening chatting beside the fire. 
When it grew late, we headed back to the cabin. It was on only my first day at camp. I'm sure my adventure is only beginning. That's got to save. So we'll save here. A two. What activity should I do this morning? Okay, so we could do archery with Amy, swimming with Cassie, or hiking with Nat. Um. Hmm, I'm kind of torn. Because on the one hand, my character said they like swimming, but the point of going to camp is trying new things. So, let's go with archery. Decide to go to the archery range. The first thing I notice is Amy. She's wildly waving in my direction. Nikki, over here! I hurry over to where Amy is stationed in front of a target. She has a bow pitch in one hand and an arrow in the other. There aren't enough targets here for everyone to get their own. If I got a share, it should be with someone cute. You seem so cute. Oh, so you're only interested in my looks then. For now, anyway. But I look forward to changing that. I'm going to turn the music down. Okay, that should be fine. Have you tried archery before? Sent an arrow flying towards the target. I'm more interested in soccer. It lands with a thumb since it's strong on one of the outer rings. But I'm Jackal. I clumsily tried to imitate her and hold up my bow. She laughs and takes my hand. You won't get very far like that. Let me help. I love this. She stands behind me and guides my hands into place. She's shorter than me, so the effect is growing different than what she was hoping for. I find myself leaning into her. I really do need the help. Make sure to keep your arms parallel to the ground and the arrow pointing straight ahead. Close your left eye and look down the shaft of the arrow with your right to aim. Draw your bow string back carefully. It takes more force than you think. When you're ready, release. In her cue, I let go of the bow string and the arrow shoots forward. And it makes a small arc and lands on the grass a few feet in front of the target. I'm just picturing um, little Merida in Braves trying to learn how to shoot. And the arrow just goes flying off into the woods. And she's like, <laughs> nice shot! I didn't even hit the target. I don't think anyone does at first. I know you'll be able to hit it soon. You might even get a bow by. I guess I have to keep trying then. That's the spirit. I think you'll be able to do it without my help now. So, um, one of these will increase your affection with Amy, and one of them doesn't. So let's try asking her for help. Yep, that gave us affection with Amy. I'm still not entirely confident in my ability, so it might be nice to have her show me again. Maybe one more with your help? She seems surprised, but happily agreed. Once again, she wraps her arms around me. I remember her advice and knock an arrow. Be honest, you don't need my help, you just want to be close to me again. Her comment catches me off guard. I can feel the blush creep up my face. You're cute when you're embarrassed. I'm so surprised I accidentally released the arrow. I sailed straight ahead, and for a second I think it will actually reach the target. But it falls to the ground once more, much closer than my previous attempt. Look at that, you're already improving. I had an excellent teacher. You're right, I take credit for your success. We practice for the rest of the morning. Amy has a better shot, but I managed to have to straw target on multiple occasions. And... For a beginner, it's back to knife. Just hit the damn target. That's all you want to start with. When it's seven seconds to grumble, we make our way to the mess hall. After a morning in the sun, I'm ready for some lunch. Nat and Fatima are standing together, so I join them. Hello, Nikki. You must help settle something between Nat and I. 
حتنا حتنا I don't think it's really matters how you pronounce it. You believe in ghosts? Um, either way, I think works. So of course, if you say you believe in ghosts, you might get points. Or I think it's. I don't know. Um, I'm probably not my dice. So that's why I, I haven't picked yet. Because we're going to let the dice decide my answer. Okay, so I have a d4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Two. No, I don't. I told you they would agree with me. Am I really the only one? That's right, I forgot. Nat doesn't believe in ghosts, which is funny because I believe in both Bigfoot. I guess I haven't thought of it too much. Have you ever seen a ghost? No, but I'd like to someday. It all seems so romantic as stories like Wuthering Heights. Oh, Wuthering Heights is not romantic. I hated having to read that in high school. In fact, there's a lot of love stories you could write about, so like they separated in life and turned to each other in death, that sort of thing. That does sound pretty cin- cinematic. I'm just not totally convinced yet. Is there anything that would change your mind? I think I'd have to see one in front of me. Well, then that's what it would take to get me to believe in Bigfoot. Don't worry, it won't take me too much longer. I went out early this morning to look. I was up this morning, too, for my daily jog. Well, she does track, so it tracks. <laughs> she does track, so it tracks. Ah, did not mean to say that, but... Sorry. I got my cup and wet. I kept an eye out for Bigfoot, just for you. Sadly, nothing to report. Yeah, I didn't find anything either. But thanks for looking. I tried my hand at archery this morning. I wasn't terribly good at it. I've never been very good at it either. But I'll probably go this afternoon and try again anyway. Giving up on the search so soon? Of course not. It's just important to diversify my camp experience. I'll search again tomorrow. I guess I'll have to become a ghost hunter to even up the scale. We'll see who finds her first. Seems a little competitive. Perhaps we could do something friendlier, like roast marshmallows. I like the way you think. There's nowhere better to tell ghost stories than at a campfire. Maybe someday people will tell Bigfoot stories instead. How was your morning, Nikki? Oh, I had a nice time. Oh? Hey, Brigitte, Nikki. I'm starving. Me too. Luckily, the burgers here are delicious. I wouldn't know. You don't like burgers? I don't dislike meat, but it was never my favorite thing. So when I heard that cow farts were bad for the environment as a child, I decided I would never catch beef again. Cow farts? I was incredibly concerned about saving the pandas as a child. That is adorable. They are the best animal. What are the two of you going to do this afternoon? I'm not sure yet. I think I'll pick my camera out. Maybe check out the woods for a good photo spot. How about you? I'm not totally sure yet. I'll have to see where the wind takes me. I.e., who am I, who do I want to spend time with? We chat for the rest of lunch and I return to my cabin after saying goodbye to my new friends. What activity should I do this afternoon? Um, um, let's keep hanging out with Amy, just because. I change into my swimsuit and head down to the lake. The sun feels so nice on my skin. I love to swim, but lay out on the beach first to soak up the sun. I close my eyes and slowly drift off to sleep. Yeah, you've had, if you've had a big lunch and the sun is so warm and, yeah. Hey! I wake up with the start and open my eyes. Whoa! Amy peers down and nudges me with her foot. Hey, Amy. 
The water is amazing. You have to come join me. You know how to swim, right? Without waiting for an answer, she grabs my hands and pulls me to my feet. Come on, I can teach you. I've been the star of my school swim team for years. But Amy doesn't know that. She pulls me into the water before I can respond. Let's start by learning to float. Grab onto my wrist and try to float on your stomach. Don't worry, I won't let you drown. Um, let's see how long this goes. Let's play along. I play along and grab her wrist. As I do, she guides me into a floating position. I'm curious to see how she would react if I went under the water. Feeling mischievous, I begin to sink. Quickly, Amy wraps her arms around me, lifting my head out of the water. Hey! It's okay, I got you. And George her arms around me for a moment. Thanks for the rescue. I launched myself into the water, swimming at top speed. Race you to the other side. What? It's exhilarating to give it my all, but I'm soon at the other side of the lake. Amy isn't far behind. You're such a great swimmer. I'm so embarrassed. Are you sure you don't want some swimming lessons? Okay, I get it. You're definitely a better swimmer than I am. I would have been surprised if you had beaten me. Swimming is one of my specialties. I guess I shouldn't have assumed. I should ask you to wake me up more often. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had such a great swim. Anytime. Let's head back. We don't want anyone getting worried about us. We return to the other side of the lake. And soon head back for tonight's activity. There is another camp event tonight. However, no details were given to us, only the location and time. Nat is unusually secretive about the nature of the activity. Four of us head there together and meet up with the other campers. I'm so excited. You'll all love the surprise. Good evening, campers, and welcome to the test of courage. A what? It's basically like a haunted house or haunted trail. They'll try and scare us. And we try not to get scared. It's a blast. That's the spirit. The test of courage can't scare me. We'll have to see about that, won't we? Don't worry too much. The story is always super lame. Bianca, you don't have to ruin it for everyone else. Sorry. I could pretend to be scared. It's really good this year. I don't think you'll need to pretend. Counselor creatures are obviously giddy with excitement. Once upon a time, there was a village named Palut. Things of Palut were happy until young girls began to disappear from their beds. A large wolf was seen outside the village by one of the hunters. A wolf? It's just a story, Katsumi. And the villagers decided to hunt the woods looking for the creature. But what they didn't know was that the wolf was among them all along. One of the villagers transformed into a wolf at night and easily picked off each villager, one by one. The werewolf was never caught and said to still hunt these woods. Hundreds of years later, Camp Palut was built in the same place as the village. What if there really are wild animals out here? It's so dark, we'd never even see them. Surely there's nothing that's close to camp. I bet I could fight a wolf. Then I am sticking, then I am sticking close to you. Exactly. Can you make it through the woods? Or will you succumb to the test of courage? Campers will fire off and enter the ha haunted trail. Counselors have been stationed throughout to give you a fright and to make sure you do not stray from the path. So find a partner and we will get started. Somehow I'm rather excited about this. It's so much fun, I promise. This feels like the beginning of a novel. Like a mystery novel? Or maybe romance? <laughs> she is very romance inclined, isn't she? It's kind of cute. We won't know until the inciting incident. I looked around at my cabin mates. We decided who to pair with. Why don't you pick first, Nikki? Nat? Amy, Cassie, 
Um, we've been spending all the time with Amy. Let's stick with Amy. Amy, will you be my partner? Don't worry, babe. I'll protect you from the monsters. I couldn't ask for a better knight in shining armor. Well, we anxiously wait for our turn to enter the forest. Amy grabs my hand. Wouldn't want you to get lost. Soon it's our turn. When listening to a story surrounded by campers and counselors, the test of courage seems laughable. Now the dark forest is ominous and almost scary. Do you think the counselors might be telling the truth? That there really is something in the forest? Now you sound like Nat. Don't be worried, it's just a cheesy story. I don't know if there's ever been anything scary here. Nothing at all? What about bears or vampires? Nothing scares me. I'm fearless. <laughs> As I found you, a cardboard monster leaps out of the forest with a cackle. <laughs> That's a very ridiculous monster. The first is quick that have appeared back into the brush. You're fearless? I wasn't scared. I was just geared up to defend you. I feel very protected. Well, good. If that monster was real, I would have totally taken it down. While the woods themselves may be spooky at night, the test of courage seems toothless after witnessing the counselor created monsters. But I didn't want to ruin my chance to be close to Amy. I link our arms and lean into her. Ready to move forward? Ready. Several other cardboard creatures try to frighten us as we move along the trail. At first I pretend I'm scared, but soon I dissolve into giggles. Yeah, I mean, who can be scared of that? Amy acts tough and brave, but soon laughs as well. Before we know it, we are out of the woods and back where we started. I wish I would have explored the forest more during the day. Probably would have been less jumpy. Brigid, Brigid, and Cassie are waiting for us when we return. We made it out alive! It was a real close call. I can't believe they had us walk in the woods at night. It seems kind of dangerous. Oh, come on, you had fun. I think that had more to do with the company than the activity. Ooh! We wait for Nat, who soon emerges from the forest with Fatima and Toe. I know it's all fake, but I still have so much fun every year. You know, this is fake, but still search for Bigfoot? It's not the same thing at all. Maybe not to you. When everyone is out of the woods, we say goodbye. Literally. <laughs> Amy, Nat, Cassie, and I return to our cabin. Little did I know that the story we heard that night had a kernel of truth. Three. Okay, we're going to stick with Amy. I made my choice. <laughs> Amy I decided to go on a hike through the woods. I'm still unsure where each path leads, but I pick one at random anyway. I mean, we haven't even gone hiking yet. It's hard to imagine that only last night I was uneasy in these woods. In the daylight, the trees look far less menacing. I enjoy the fresh mountain air as, we, as I walk farther away from the campground. My thoughts are interrupted when someone calls behind me. Hey, wait up! I turn around and see Amy chasing after me. I slow down and allow her to catch up. Want to be my hiking partner? What if I said no? I suppose I'll just have to walk by myself. In the same direction as you. At the same speed. Well, if you're going to go that far, I might as well say yes. Um, if this had been like the first day, I would be a little... Mm, but I, I spent time pretty much... I picked for every chance I've gotten. So, that's not a problem. Force cooperation, my favorite. That could be problematic. We need not to chase up to mine and we continue to walk again. The morning air is chilly and I regret not wearing a jacket. By my best efforts, I begin to shiver. Amy turns towards me, looking concerned. Is you cold? 
I'm fine. We can keep going. For sure. We keep going down the path, but I can feel Amy staring at me. I don't want her to worry, so I try to ignore how cold it is. It must be a, doing a bad job, because after only a few moments, Amy wraps her arm around my shoulder. Her skin is warm to the touch. Her face heats up with a blush. Isn't she cold, too? I don't get cold easily. I'm hot-blooded. You, on the other hand, should have worn a jacket. I didn't realize how chilly it would be early in the morning. Do you want to go back? Nope, I want to keep playing time with you. I like having you here to warm me up. I'm here as long as you need me. I'm surprised to see you this early in the morning. Aren't you more of a night owl? Hey, even I can wake up early sometimes. Especially if I have the right motivation. What was the motivation this morning? To spend time with you, of course. You don't need to wake up early to do that. I suppose I don't. And you don't have to freeze to spend time with me. Let's turn around before you turn blue. I suppose you're right. Come with me next time? Of course. I wish I had remembered a jacket. We could have spent more time together. We turn around and return to our cabin before going to the mess hall for lunch. I enter the mess hall and join my friends for lunch. Hey, Nikki. This morning was just gushing about starfish. I was not gushing. Just sharing some of the legends about how they came to be. There are all kinds of interesting folk tales from Australia and Hawaii. It makes sense that they would have folk tales. You're so cute when you're excited. Oh, stop it. There's really that much to know about starfish? Of course! I think the fun is always new things to learn. Sorry, this must not be very interesting. I love hearing about new stuff. Yeah, you could talk to me about starfish all day. I didn't get to hear any starfish facts. What's the weirdest one you can think of? Most starfish are edible. You can eat a starfish? Wow. What does it taste like? I've heard it's like salty ground beef. I've never considered eating one, though. Weird. Is that too, too out there? I definitely didn't expect it. Are you spending your time at the lake, then? Probably. Not, Nat and I will probably explore the lake again. They just can't stop looking for Bigfoot. I want to do some more archery. With that dedication, we're going to be approaching. You know it. Both of you are new to Cap Salute, right? How was your first test of courage? It was actually kind of scary, don't you think, Nancy? Um, I mean, no. I didn't find it scary. You must be much braver than I am. I don't know about that. It was nice having someone with me, though. That was always my favorite part, too. How many times have you done this test? Oh, they do this every year. I've done it three times, I think. This year, the story is true. People have disappeared from this area before. What? That can't be right. Never heard of that. I'm sure I read that somewhere. You're just making that up. Strange things happen at Camp Police. Oh, stop it. Can't you see that you're staring to see me? I'm only trying to help the counselors out. Stories are so lame that without me, they wouldn't be scary at all. Uh, now it's that they're not supposed to be that scary. I can understand her position. I think it's pretty scary. I guess I'm out of a job then. You have to find some other way to fill your time. What's the story behind your shirt? Of course, sir. It's from Marine Biology Camp for the aquarium back home. I go every year. This year, too? Oh, I wouldn't miss it. It's not until later in the summer. You'll have to tell me all about it. We finish eating and I return to my cabin for the afternoon's activities. What should I do this afternoon? If you haven't figured it out by now, archery with Amy. I visit the archery range once more. Amy greets me as I arrive. You following me? I just wanted to see you again, Robin Hood. Watch this. Amy releases an arrow, hitting the target square in the bullseye. Wow, you must have been practicing. Every day. It's not like I have an archery range at home. Why so much practice? 
I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I couldn't hit the bullseye before I left camp. Bit of a perfectionist. You could say that. If you seem to be a master, could you help me finally hit the target? I would love to. But since I'm such a perfectionist, you need to hit the bullseye too. It's the only way to prove exactly how good of a teacher I am. It could take all week and I still wouldn't be able to do it. I guess we'll be spending a lot of time together then. No complaints here. We practiced together for most of the afternoon. I still haven't hit a bullseye, but my arms are tired and I'm ready to stop for the day. I can tell Amy wants me to hit a bullseye. But I'm still not sure if that's even possible. I don't want to waste all day here and leave grumpy. Should I keep trying? Let's keep trying. Okay. One more time then. Thanks, the spirit. I line up my shot for what feels like the hundredth time today. I may have played the uh, demo quite a few times to figure out what would be the best responses. I take a deep breath. And release! The arrow shoots forward and the head buries itself into the middle of the target. Oh my! I knew you could do it! Told you I was the best teacher in the world. I can't believe I did it! Congratulations on your first of many triumphs. It's all thanks to you, really. I guess we're done for the day. Can't talk there. Agreed. Tired and sore, we head back to our cabin. The sky is finally clear enough to go stargazing. However, going out at night by myself isn't exactly appealing. I should invite someone to see the stars with me. Okay. And obviously there's only one choice because there's only one person I've been hanging out with. And this is where the demo ended. Amy is excited and agrees readily. We look for a spot with a view of the night sky. I've been alone with Amy before, but somehow this feels different. Is this a date? Before I can think too hard about it, the trees open up above us and I can see the stars. That's beautiful. Wow. It's gorgeous. Not as gorgeous as you. You're such a flirt. Only with you. How come I don't believe that? I guess you just have to trust me. Without waiting for my response, she drops through the grass by my feet. Can I see any constellations here? I follow her lead, laying down in the grass beside her. Mm. We're able to see a lot of summer constellations. This big dipper and Pegasus is right there. And that one over there is Cassiopeia and her son-in-law, Perseus. Her son-in-law does have families. Constellations are just stories. Perseus, the hero, rode on the winged horse Pegasus, and he married Cassiopeia's daughter, Andromeda. The constellations we know of are almost all based on Greek and Roman stories. Yep. Because if you think about the names, they're all Greek or Roman. I mean, Ursa Major is definitely um, Latin. So what's his story? Perseus. He seems important. He has a lot of stories. But he might be most well known for being for being the guy that killed Medusa. The snakehead lady? Exactly. So my favorite Perseus story is the one where he rescues Andromeda. It's a corny love story, but sometimes I like corny love stories. Is Andromeda a constellation? She is, but you can't really see her right now. She'll be easier to see later in the year. The story goes, Cassiopeia was super vain and that angered the gods. As punishment, they changed her daughter Andromeda to some cliffs to get eaten by a monster. That seems a bit extreme. <laughs> the Greek gods were very extreme, regardless of what you might think from the movie Hercules by Disney. They did a lot to uh, tame down the original stories. Greek myths are always extreme. That's what I just said. First, he flies by on Pegasus and sees Andromeda chained to the cliff. So he swoops in and saves her in return for her hand in marriage. Wow, that's not exactly progressive. 
that they had such a beautiful love that the gods decided to immortalize them in the stars. I would rescue you if you were in trouble. Just like Perseus. Let's hope you never have to. I suppose I'd rather win you over another way. Ah! Spend the rest of the evening staring at the stars with Amy Garns wrapped tightly around me. When Amy and I return to the cabin, the lights are already off. Nat and Cassie must be asleep. We whisper goodnight and crawl into our beds. My heart is beating fast from our evening together. But I am eventually able to fall asleep. Day four. Okay. Definitely um, a change in routine. The pleasant dreams are interrupted by a knock on the cabin's door. I roll out of bed and answer. Nikki, is the rest of your cabin here? Yeah, I think so. Turn around to check. Sure enough, all three are in their beds. We're all here. We need you four at the mess hall in ten minutes. Make sure to travel in pairs. She gives a quick nod before moving on to the cabin next door. I shut the door and turn to my cabin mate. I'm supposed to go to the mess hall. Did she say what was going on? Nope, nothing. Nat and Cassie are dressed and ready to go quickly. Gotta get Amy moving, but she is practically dead asleep. Should we go? I can wait with her if you two want to go ahead. Okay, we'll save you seats at our table. They head outside, leaving me alone with Amy. I can't help but think of last night. Amy, you need to wake up. I sit down on the bed next to her, ready to shake her awake. Before I get a chance, Amy rolls over and pulls me against her chest. Amy! I struggle for a moment. Amy, come on! I wish we could stay here like this. But the counselor seemed to think it was important. Amy, you cannot be this heavy of a sleeper. I look up at her. You were such a faker. Good morning to you, too. You have to get up. Amy releases me and sits up. All right, I'm awake. What's the rush? Counselor woke us up. We need to go to the mess hall. Nat and Cassie went along ahead of us. She sighs and climbs out of bed. I suppose that's important enough to get up for. Amy leaps to her feet and is soon ready to go. We head out to join Nat and Cassie. Campers meet here for lunch, but today the atmosphere is different. We're funny Nat and Cassie. We sit down. Did we miss anything? Nothing yet. We seem to be waiting until they're sure everyone is here. Has anything like this happened before, Nat? No, this is completely new. Maybe there's an outbreak? For a wild animal? Like Mothman? Mothman isn't native to this area. He's being sighted in West Virginia. They would know that. Our table isn't the only one speculating wildly. As the gossip continues, the council steps to the front of the room. We quickly fall silent. I know you are probably confused gathering on such short notice. That's something I appreciate, I know, is the counselors all have very distinct appearances. Um, I think originally in the demo, um, they used the same sprite for all the counselors because they didn't have enough um, different ones. Unfortunately, I have a terrible announcement to make. Excuse me, one of your slow cam campers has gone missing. Oh, shit. I knew this was coming. I knew it. It would be her, too. And they're working with local authorities to locate her. The parents have been con contacted early this morning, and those that are able will be picked up early. Campers that have guardians that are unable to pick them up will be confined to their cabins or to the mess hall for meals and guided activities. The buddy system should be used at all times to look, look out for your fellow campers. Please return to your cabin. Council will be checking in to instruct you on pick pickup procedures. The room explodes in hushed voices. It's me? We're isolated up a mountain. There's nothing and no one around here. A wild animal? Without a word, Amy stands the next to Miss Hall. I hurry to follow her. Amy, we need to stay together. Nikki, do you think you'll be picked up soon? Probably not. 
I think part of the reason I was sent to camp was so my parents could go on vacation. So who knows where they are? I'm in the same boat. I can't be stuck here for four more days knowing she's out there. We have to find her. Amy, that's crazy. We have no idea what happened to her. Where would we even start? I don't know. But what if she's out there hurt or trapped? The same could happen to us. They're working with the police. They'll find her. We're practically in the middle of nowhere. Who knows how long it will take them to get here and even start looking. Nikki, you'll come with me, right? Um... Uh, duh. I'm not going to let her do this alone because she's totally determined to go looking. I know it isn't a good idea. I also know that Amy will do it anyway, with or without me. If we're together, I might be able to keep her safe. We have to go now, then, before our counselor sees us. Really? You'll come with me? Of course. We sneak around the back of the cabin, trying to look inconspicuous. Don't look suspicious. Don't look suspicious. Don't look suspicious. Nikki? Cassie, you have to cover for us. We'll be back by sundown, I promise. You're crazy. Please? Fine, but you better come back. Amy gives a salute, and we disappear into the woods. What's the plan? I don't really have one. I just can't live with myself if I didn't try something. Well, where do we start? Kasumi likes to swim. Maybe the lake? We search around the lake with no sign of Kasumi. Maybe she went deeper into the forest? After searching nearly all day, I finally stopped. Amy, we should go back. What? No. We haven't found her yet. It's getting late. We won't be able to see for much longer. All the more reason to keep searching. We can't leave her out here alone. We can't help anyone if we get lost. Are we supposed to just abandon her? Of course not. But we can't just run into the woods at night with no plan. If we don't get back soon, they might start looking for us when they should be looking for Kashimi. Wait a minute. Something doesn't feel right. Where are all the search parties? It feels like we're the only ones searching for her. Uh, it's a big wood, and I don't know how dense the underbrush is. What do you mean? We should have run into someone by now. We're in the mountains in the middle of the forest. I'm sure there are other search parties out there. We can look for her tomorrow. Fine. Let's go. Any souls barely looking at me the whole way back. I'm glad you're back. Is Amy okay? She's worried that no one is looking for Kasumi. You think she's right? Maybe? I hope she's wrong. Me too. I'm exhausted. I climb into bed, my head still full of doubt. Eventually, I'm able to fall asleep. Day five. When I wake up, I immediately roll to face Amy's bunk. But she isn't there. Did anyone see Amy? No, I haven't seen her. I'm starting to panic. Maybe she went to breakfast early? Without us? Let's check the mess hall for her. If she isn't there, we should alert the counselors. Uh, before we go any further, I'm guessing that Amy went off to keep looking for Kasumi. My call feels empty. Campers have already begun to say goodbye. She isn't here. Let's see if anyone else has seen her. Hi, Bianca. Have you seen Amy today? No, not today. I saw her last night, though, outside the cabin. You did? Maybe she went missing as well. What? You can't assume that. Amy already ran off yesterday. But she told me first. You should really talk to a counselor. I'm sure they'll find her. Bianca is right. We need to tell someone. Uh, whatever. Um, let's go with yes. I think you're right. Amy might be in danger. I scan the room for the first time so I can find. 
Hello, Nikki. How are you feeling? I'm worried about Amy. Oh? I can't find Amy, and I'm scared something might have happened to her. That is most concerning. I'll let the other counselors know. We can search for Amy while we look for Kasumi. Thanks, I guess. I'm not sure what good will come of this, but at least I tried. I turned to my cabin mate. How did it go? They cut their books. So what do we do now? We have to find Amy. You think you can? It doesn't matter. I have to try. I can't cover for you both. Not forever. We'll make it work. I won't be gone long. Good luck. I may have sounded confident to Nat and Cassie, but I'm not even sure where to begin. Amy probably went into the forest to look for Katsumi, but there's no way to know exactly which direction she went. I can't give up. I have to find her, even if it means running through the woods screaming her name. Amy? I searched for hours, getting farther and farther from the campsite. Is she really gone? What if I never find her? Amy! To my surprise and relief, she finally answers back. Nikki? Oh, Amy! I'm so overwhelmed I can't stop myself from leaping into her arms. <laughs> Nikki, what's wrong? What's wrong? I can't believe you went off without me! What? You threw me a and when I woke up, you were gone! I thought you were hurt or lost somewhere! How could you run off without telling me? I thought we were a team. We are. I just didn't want to get you involved. I want to protect you. It's not your job to protect anyone. You're a teenager, just like the rest of us. Did you think about how I would feel if you disappeared trying to protect me? I'm so sorry. I guess I'm just not ready to people caring about me like that. Aww. Well, I care about you, and you don't need to protect me. We can protect each other. I'm sorry. I'll never run off without you again. Promise? Promise. We need to go back. Counselors will know if we're gone. If I didn't find anything, I can't go back yet. Of course not. Searching the woods alone is insane. We aren't going to find her by wandering aimlessly through the forest. But we can't just do nothing. Counselors won't do anything so someone has to. We will find a way to help Kasumi. This just isn't it. I guess you're right. Let's go then. A small plan in place, we return to our cabin. Oh, thank goodness you're both safe. Were you able to find anything? Nothing at all. I'm sure you'll find her eventually. It's almost dinner time. We should go to the mess hall. Did you see that? See what? Counselors, they're acting really weird. They're hiding something. I know it. Let's find Kasumi's cabin mate. Maybe they saw something. I think Fatima shared a cabin with her. We could ask her. I soon locate, locate Fatima and rejoin her. Hi, Fatima. Oh, hello, Nikki. You're Kasumi's cabin mate, right? Yes. We just want to know if you remembered anything about her disappearance. I didn't exactly know that my roommate was going to disappear, so I wasn't keeping track of her. I'm sorry, it was a dumb question. I know you're just trying to help. I've just been asked so many times already. I wish I had more to tell you. Who else shared your cabin? Nicole and Olivia, but they left this morning. I don't think you've met them. So it's a dead end. I saw Kasumi that night before she vanished. Oh? Where? Did she say anything? Anything that would help us find her? She was down by the lake with someone else. I didn't want to intrude, so I didn't see who she was with. So it could have been anyone. I hate that I can't be more helpful. I tried to look for her in the woods, but we didn't find anything. We almost got lost ourselves. No wonder. Maybe we could get the remaining campers to form some kind of search party. Shouldn't the counselors have already done that? They should have. I don't think they've done anything at all. You can't believe that. I do. Why haven't we seen any police? There haven't been any searches for her. Amy, that's crazy. Just because we haven't seen it doesn't mean they aren't looking. It isn't good enough. Oh, Amy, you're 
taking this really hard. We need to do something. Um, yes, I am saving a lot. Um, okay. Someone needs to be the voice of reason here, and it's not Amy. Let's get this through. You can't just go running into the forest without some kind of plan. I want to help, but I don't want you to be the next missing person. What if we just took some precautions? We could mark our way as we search so we can find our way back. You think that would work? Yeah. Like a, a breadcrumb trail, but a bit more permanent. Yeah, one that birds won't care. Or we could mark the trees as we pass them. Something like that. Then we could keep looking. It's too dark outside. We wouldn't even be able to see the trail. We could set up a search party tomorrow morning. I want to help. Me too. I think we can convince Kathy and Nat to join as well. If the counselors aren't going to look, it's up to us. We read the mess all feeling somewhat hopeful. We finally have a plan. I have to believe we can find her. Day six. I wake up as soon as the sun rises. Despite Amy's work for sleeping in late, she's already awake. I'm too nervous to sleep. We're going to find her today. Sounds like she's trying to convince herself more than me. I can feel it. Nat and Cassie are quickly ready to join us as well. Bianca and Fatima arrive soon after that. So what's the plan for the search? I'm not sure. Brigitte was the one who suggested it. Where is Brigitte? I'm sure she'll be here soon. It's still rather early. Amy is obviously agitated while we wait for an uncomfortably long time. Are we sure that Brigitte is coming? Of course she's coming. Maybe she just overslept? We should go check on her. She wanted to get an early start. I'm sure we can give her just a little bit more time. She's probably totally fine. The sooner we leave, the easier it will be to avoid the counselors. We can't let them know what we're doing. Amy, it's fine. I'll go wake her up. It won't be. It won't look as suspicious if any. If only one of us goes. Okay, fine. But hurry back. I knock on the door of her cabin. There's no response. So early, but hopefully if I knock harder, someone will wake up. Eventually, Twila, Twila answers. Nikki, why are you here so early? Can I talk to Brigitte? Sure. She tries to look behind her. She isn't here. She must not have come back last night. What? I went to bed pretty early. I just assumed she stayed out late. She was supposed to meet us this morning. She was? Is Brigitte missing too? We have to tell everyone else. Come back to my cabin with me. Twila and I return to my cabin. Twila, Twila, I'm not sure. Where's Brigitte? Brigitte is missing. Missing? Brigitte didn't come back to the cabin last night. Did you tell the counselors? I fell asleep early. I didn't know she wasn't there until I woke up this morning. She's gone? What do we do now? We look for them, of course. Are you sure that's a good idea? Someone or something is out there. It's foolish to think we can keep everyone safe. No one else is going to do anything. We can't just leave them. It's dangerous. No more dangerous than waiting here for something else to happen. We need to tell the counselors. We can't do that. Why not? I don't trust them, and you shouldn't either. If we want to find Brigitte and Katsumi, we have to do it ourselves. It's my fault for not noticing Brigitte was gone sooner. I'd do anything to get her back safely. Let's get started, then. Amy begins to plan the search party with input from Cassie, Nat, and Tulila. Nikki? Are you okay with this? What do you mean? Amy didn't take your concerns very seriously. You're right, though. This is a crazy idea. I'm worried. I don't think I could stop her, though. She's going to get the whole camp killed. Mm. Uh, uh, I 
it definitely feels like there's a reason behind Amy's distrust of the counselors. But she honestly wants to find missing campers. And it doesn't seem like the counselors are doing a damn thing. So, at least Amy wants to do something instead of sitting on her butt. So, I trust her. Amy's right. We can't just do nothing. A flash of pain hit my head. I try to focus on Bianca's words. I just want to get all of us left in the woods. It's pointless. Not pointless. We can't just stop caring about our friends. The head pounds again. Friends? We barely know each other. That's not true. There's no reason to look for anyone. Uh oh. I don't like where this is going. I open my eyes slowly. Where am I? Everything hurts when I try to sit up. I do, my head hits the top of the cage I'm put in prison in. Well, damn it. I seem to be inside a camp cabin, but it's not one I've ever seen before. In an identical cage across the room, I could see a flash of orange hair. Ricky? Nikki? She got you too? What? Who? Bianca. Damn it, I didn't want it to be Bianca. What are you talking about? Where are we? I'm not sure. Somewhere in the forest? I don't know how she did it, but somehow Bianca kidnapped us. What? Kasumi is here too. I looked down Brigitte and could barely make up to with Kasumi crumpled on the ground. What happened to her? She was panicking. I think Bianca did something to knock her out. She's been here the whole time? I guess so. I don't think I've been here very long. Especially compared to Kasumi. Why on earth did Bianca kidnap us? I have no idea. It doesn't hurt us beyond the kidnapping, that is. She obviously wants us alive, I just haven't figured out why that is. We have to get out of here. Don't not tickle. She's coming. I'll pretend to be asleep. Try to get her over to me. Maybe I can grab her. I'll try. Even with Brigitte's warning, I couldn't believe it. Bianca was my friend. At least I thought she was. Bianca looks across the room. Oh, boy. looks different. She quickly checks to see Miss Pulse and seems satisfied with the results. The beef will still helping Bianca will check on her neck. She says her face glance on me. Ah, Nikki, you're awake. She moves closer to me, avoiding Brigitte entirely. Where am I? You're in my cabin. Why? Well, because I brought you here. Well, duh. But that's not why the way I'm asking. I feel terrible about this. Really, I do, but I'm not exactly human. You could say I have unique needs. Not human? I used to be able to cloak my true form, but I'm losing power by the day. What does that have to do with me? You, Brigitte, and Kasumi will be components of a very important spell. You should feel flattered. What? Don't worry, I have a few preparations yet to make, so you'll get to live a little longer. She turns towards Brigitte. Don't think you can take me down so easily. I'm not stupid, Brigitte. Bianca turns and picks up a book off her shelf. Then she leaves through the front door, locking it behind her. Brigitte groans and sits up. So much for that idea. She has to sacrifice us. How are we supposed to escape now? <laughs> Suddenly I hear shattering glass. Amy launches herself through the broken window, landing on the balls of her feet. Missy? Amy! I can't believe you're here! Amy finally notices her surroundings taking in the scene around her. Nikki, what happened? We can explain later. You have to hurry. Of course! She reaches towards me, but I shake my head. Kasumi is hurt. We have to get her out first. Get us out of this thing, and I, can, and I think I can carry her. Amy turns to the cage with Brigitte and Kasumi. Although the people inside can't reach to open it, there doesn't seem to be any lock. Bianca probably didn't expect Amy to come through a window. When she finishes, when she finishes, Amy comes to my side. I'm glad you're okay. I can't believe you came for me. I would never leave you behind. 
Suddenly, Bianca opens the front door. Hurry, Amy! But she doesn't seem to understand my urgency. Bianca is the one who kidnapped us. Forget Dick to see me out of here. Of course. Amy, behind you. Before Amy could react, Bianca jumps on her back, trying to strangle her. Soon, the two of them are halfway across the room, still locked in a grapple. I freeze. What could I possibly do to help? I scan the room frantically for some kind of weapon. My eyes land on the bow hanging on the wall. I've practiced with it before, but would I be able to use it now? I don't have time to doubt myself. I hold the bow like Amy had taught me. I take aim and release. Amy had taught me well. The arrow flies true. It hits Bianca under her left shoulder and she drops to the floor. I don't spare her a second glance as I grab, Amy, grab Amy's hand, pulling her to her feet. Let's go. We run together, hand in hand, as far as we can get from that cabin. I can't believe you saved my life. I learned from the best. Promise to explain later? Of course. I can't believe you two are all right. You just ran into Brigitte and Kasumi. How are they? Brigitte was in a good mood, carrying Kasumi over her shoulder like a sack of potatoes. Oh, come on! You couldn't even do, like, a bridal carry or something? Is Kasumi okay? She was walking and talking low before I sent her to bed. I think she's going to bounce back. I probably need sleep just as badly. Me too. I wake up to a knock on the door. Good morning, Nikki. Kasumi? Good to see you again. How are you feeling? A little sore from sleeping on the ground, but I'm otherwise all right. That's great to hear. I just wanted to say thank you for rescuing me, that is. Oh, I can't take all the credit. Amy saved both of us. I have to go now. My dad's are here to pick me up. No! Oh, her dad! No! Oh, the just wanted to say goodbye to you and Amy first. She's still asleep. Well, you'll just have to say goodbye to her for me. I will. Thanks for everything. I decided to wake Amy up early. Good morning. How are you? Better than I could have imagined. Kasumi stopped by to say goodbye. She looked pretty good. And Bianca? I killed her, didn't I? You saved my life. And you saved mine. You disappeared, so... So you ran to the woods looking for me? Yeah. You were right all along. If we had just kept looking, we might have found them sooner. I should have thought of a plan first. But it doesn't matter now. We found them. And I can't thank you enough for saving my life. So what do we do now? Our parents will be here soon to pick us up. And we go back home. I know we haven't known each other that long, but I really like you. I've never been in a long-distance relationship before. But since you only have one year of high school left, I would love that. Amy and I dated long distance while we finished up our final year of high school. When we were both accepted to the same university, we decided to move in together. Yay! That was really sweet. Oh my goodness. So, I did not expect that it was Bianca. I mean, there were hints at it, of course, but I didn't want it to be Bianca. And, um... Uh, I'm one of the backers. Did you see just on it? I'm, I'm, that's me. There it is. I see my name. Okay, yeah. So, oh, the background changed. Okay, yeah, because before it was just Amy, Cass, and that, and that. And now that, um, I played through the story once, there's an option to romance Bianca. So, plenty of opportunity for angst. Um, so, I am very tempted, but... Um, I think just once through is fine. Um, I will upload this to YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, then hooray, you found it. Um, and I hope people... Um, do give this game a shot because it is sweet. And here's all the CGs. So.
So there's basically, um, according to the writer, there's a CG for um, you spending time with the others and uh, that first time, like with Amy, there's a CG when you do archery with her the first time. With Cassie, there's a CG if you go swimming with her the first time. So with that, this CG is when you go hiking with them the first time. It's really funny. You basically trip and fall on top of her. Them. And I'm assuming with Bianca, it's the same thing. That will be CG with her. So there's the CG with doing archery together. And then stargazing together. And you even get to watch both, look at both. That's really cool. So yeah, I definitely want to uh, do all of the romances. But I like that you don't, that you don't say I love you right away. There's definitely a spark there, but um, it's not, it's not love. It can't be love, not that quickly. So anyway, um, I hope people enjoyed this, and um, if you did, please, please, please go um, and give the demo a shot. If you enjoyed the demo, then go ahead and buy the game because it's really cool. I love that um, it's, there aren't many games that feature, I guess you could call it lesbian or psychic romance. A lot of games focus more on pet or gay romances. So please show this game some love. It's, it's really sweet and cute and I'm glad that I backed it. So I will hopefully, the plan is to um, switch back to Arcade Spirit this um, weekend. I'm not going to say specifically Saturday or Sunday. It depends on um, what my schedule is like because um, weekends can get a little dicey at times. Um, so um, I should be um, going to continue streaming twice a week whenever possible. Um, because there's, we're basically halfway through our play spirit, so I want to get through that as quickly as possible. Because it's so good. So, um, the plan is to, uh, to pick up with our play spirit on this weekend. So, I hope you'll join me then. Take care.